This is also another special day, something that uh, we are going to participate in today and have the privilege of doing. It's really got several levels as I've been meditating before the Lord and preparing for. It's got several levels of meaning for us. It's also a first for the sanctuary from the standpoint of multiplication and what God has us and his purpose. We are going to be ordaining Gary Jones into the ministry today. Now let me tell you what that does not mean. Because this, because people are used to traditional religious church organizational background. And so as soon as somebody is being ordained, First of all, they think he's being ordained to be a pastor, or she. But what they commonly think is, that must mean either Gary's going somewhere, or I'm going somewhere. And neither one of those is true. Because God has a destiny for the sanctuary from the very beginning. And this is a time where he is now multiplying strength. He doesn't subtract, although he does subtraction in the scriptures. What he likes to do is multiply. And he likes to accentuate his calling. And primarily what we're going to be doing today is we are simply going to be agreeing with heaven. There's a lot of ways to look at the scriptures that talk about thy kingdom come and thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Now, how did this all come about? I think probably about six weeks ago, maybe a month ago, Gary and I eat lunch together typically on Friday as he's one of the leaders of the fellowship. And uh, toward the end of our meal, he was saying, you know, I want to be ordained. And I'm thinking, okay. I mean, that sounds good to me. I didn't say okay right then, if you'll notice. Because I have decided a while back that we do our best to move at the direction of what God's doing in his timing. So I need things to be confirmed in a variety of ways. As a matter of fact, I did go back and talk to Karen about it because she's probably the wisest person I know on the face of the earth, literally. And I would have been a whole lot better off if I would have listened to her many times. It would have saved me a great deal of burned tail feathers. But one of the things that Gary told me was that he had had a dream. So that caught my attention because it was a common way of communicating in the scriptures. But it's something that we've lost over the generations. We've just attributed it all to pizza and, you know, things like that. But God does use dreams. But the thing about dreams is that dreams are also very subjective. So much of the time it really depends on, and part of an interpretation principle is, it's important to sometimes ask what's going on in the person's life. But what's going on in a person's life, what's going on in their emotions, all of those things, those can play into interpreting and you interpreting a dream. And sometimes depending on how you are looking at life and frustrations and those kinds of things, sometimes you can subjectively interpret your dream and miss it and get it partly right or partly wrong. And that's why we have teams, but that's also why we have teams here. We are very, very strong in the area that we believe in relationship with each other, but in particular those God has pulled, called out to be in leadership with each other. And so at any rate, I had gone home to talk to my wife because that's the first level, but she's a part of my house. And so it would have been very cool if God could also use something else to confirm. He did. Because then when I went to Bill, my associate pastor, who's also ordained, he came in to the sanctuary ordained and had been for many years when he, I, I, I talked to him about the fact that Gary had mentioned that he wanted to be ordained. He said, well, you know, a few weeks back, I had a dream that he was being ordained in the church. Now we've got two witnesses, two dreams, 
And so what that was to me is that declared that that was the will of God in the heavens. See, we didn't just take one dream and subjectively, we, we submitted it so that there was a multiplicity of relational things going on to interpret what's going on as far as the dreams are concerned. Most dreams, for those who have been a part of Bix and dream training, most of the dreams you dream are not literal, they're metaphoric. In this, but there are a percentage that are considered prophetic or declarative future literal events to, to take place. And in this case, that was exactly what was going on. Hearing what Bill had to say was exactly what I needed to hear. No matter how much I love Gary, if I had not had that confirmed, I wouldn't have done it. I would have said, we're gonna wait until God confirms this. Because what we are all about is not to decide, okay, we know how to do that. Ordained, he's a good guy. He is one of my leaders. He's been faithful. And it's important to have all the faithfulness in character. But more and more, I'm learning to live my life looking to see what the Father is doing and hearing what he is saying. And if he's not saying it or hearing it, or, or I'm not hearing him as it relates to me personally, I'm not quick to do it. I don't have to ask God how to tie my shoes in the morning. I'm not talking about things like that. But I'm talking about something that is going to be a substantive move or change in my life that I need to have relational confirmations going on. And I need to have multiplicity of witness so that I know that I'm moving in the timing of God. Now, there's a scripture in, in before we pray and lay hands on Gary. There's a scripture, 1 Corinthians 4, 1. This is how one should regard us. Paul's speaking of himself, but this is applicable to anybody that God has set aside. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ, and secondly, and stewards of the mysteries of God. What is a steward? A steward is like a middleman. The steward takes the property, takes the value, takes the wealth of the boss and stewards that. Now it says a steward of the mysteries. Once again, we go back to the fact that what we are doing is looking not to a doctrine or a ritual that we perpetuate from generation to generation because it's what the, the what a organization says these are the things we believe i was just in fact i was watching a youtube video yesterday i just happened to come across it and the man was saying in a conference what's important to us he didn't say maintain the cause of christ he said, what's important to us is that we come together and promote the denominational name distinctives. As a matter of fact, I worked for a pastor one time who became filled with the Holy Spirit. It was not a spirit-filled denomination. He became filled with the Holy Spirit. He had a lot of things going on from the mysteries, the invisible realm, God's invisible realm. Those things that he says is part of his kingdom. He had a lot of things going on and the church was growing and people were having miraculous things happen in their lives and in their bodies. There was no other explanation for. So they sent a committee down from the denominational headquarters to find out about this. While they were there investigating and in a church service and talking to the pastor and, and listening to the testimonies, a couple of them received miraculous healings. After they left, a couple of weeks later, he received a letter from the denominational head and said, we recognize that what you are doing is clearly of God but it is not part of our mm -mm distinctives. 
therefore we are going to remove you from the conference. We are not about just trying to perpetuate church doctrine and church ritual. But we are looking, mystery sounds like a really woo word. But Gary will be a steward of one who trains and imparts mysteries of Christ, mysteries of the kingdom of God, of the invisibles. And he's being given specifically by God. It's important that as part of this family of believers, his heart, and that's one of the reasons that I'm really up for it, his heart is to establish what God is doing in this place, in this city, through this spiritual family. We don't know everything that's going to happen in the days ahead. But I think it's interesting that God is setting up us up right now and is multiplying our strength in giving us bench strength in advance. He's giving us bench strength of anointed leadership to be able to do and be ready to do those things instead of having to scramble. We would love to do that, but we've got no leadership for that. Because we need somebody that's more than a strong corporate leader as such, although I'm not saying anything against business principles. We operate, you need to have organization. But I'm not, I'm, there are a lot of leaders in churches and I've been in the church world long enough to know, I'm speaking the truth here, that they are given their position because they're influential in the business community, which means that they are able to bring in money. And it's really about that. And some of the brothers bless their hearts. And some of the sisters are about as spirit connected as a wet rag. They are totally carnal. They're great businessmen, but totally cold and carnal to the things of God. When God is establishing a depth of strength of people, I believe, that are set aside by him. And this is why I say this is a first for the sanctuary. Because today, not only are we agreeing with heaven for Gary's personal life, but we are also welcoming and thanking God that now the multiplication begins in another level of strength for this family and for this church, even in ways that we are not aware of at this point. So Gary, if you'd come on up, and Bill, if you would come on up, we want to lay hands on you. And by the way, I am specifically going to be using the verbiage because God has spoken to me some time ago and it's been confirmed many ways. And this is going to be a strange maybe sound or word to some of you. But I am ordaining him not as a pastor but as a seer in the body. Because that's what he is. He sees. There are two different words for prophet in the Old Testament. One of them is one who hears the words of God and speaks them. The Nabal, he speaks words he hears. Another one sees. Gary sees. And it, it struck me kind of strange one time. I thought, you know, because I was reading a book about seers and I felt my heart say, Gary's a seer. He is a young seer. He's not perfect. None of if we if we're going on perfection, let's just somebody lock the doors. We'll see you later because we're going to all have to leave. But we want to set you aside. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. You think that it's been intensifying. Yeah. It's going to get clearer. And God is going to get more specific with you. He's going to show you things more specifically. Would you stretch your hands this war, uh, way as we are agreeing with heaven now? And that means that you are identifying with Gary yeah. as a body of believers here. Yeah. And you're saying yes. And we as the people, we welcome this and agree with what heaven is saying. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your gifts and your callings. We thank you for what you have spoken from the heavens. We thank you for the gifting of this man. Yes, Lord. It is your will. It is the will of heaven to set him aside, to appoint him in an official, recognized way to the ministry. The ministry of being a steward of the mysteries of God and a servant of Christ and leading others in that way. And so as we lay hands upon him, I lay hands on him, setting him aside as a seer in this body for the benefit of this body, this city, and everything else that you'll call him to do. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your appointment in his life. In the name of Jesus. First year, I'd just like to tell you what the Lord says there's, there's ministry and then there's fortified ministry. Yeah. Ministry has been those things which man interpreted where somebody said, well, I want to be in the ministry. Mm -hmm. Fortified ministry is those that the Lord has called me. Mm -hmm. ministry, not just ministry or career. Right. So the word fortified means to be packed, strengthened, uh, more of the mm. spirit, more of his movement, more of his clarity, uh, more of his calling, and even more, more of his expectation of you, where he's called you into this place to do specific things in this body. And I see the Lord uh, using you, if I see a vine, uh, more like a root, and the root shot off, but it was in this body, connected to this vine. And what the Lord was, Lord is, is, is specifically call you into being a seer into this body. I think it's ironic that God would put two seers around Gary. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way that he did it. Mm -hmm. Why he did it, we don't know. But I know this much. God will enable you to be able to more see in the future. He will allow you to see more in the present, right where we are right now, and God will reveal some things of the past to you. Uh -huh. But this is a new and more fortified walk in the Lord. And this is what the Lord's gonna call you to. I hear the Lord saying, that prophetically I'll speak this. And the Lord says, do not be a believer of those things that you have seen, said the Lord, yea, those that walk in a double path, but walk circumspectly and rightly before me. For I have come to strengthen thee and to encourage thee and to open up doors that no man can close. For you shall be a shoot, yea, even a root, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. yeah. that shall multiply and strengthen this body, saith the Lord. So walk upright and respectfully before the people. For I call you the fortified one, one that sees, one that sees in the now and one who sees in the future. I have given you a new spirit, said the Lord, yea, that one of the words of wisdom, said God, wisdom and knowledge, so that you shall be a bulwark. It's the only way I know how to explain it. One whose feet are shod and firm and rooted in the gospel of Christ. A foundation whereby one can come and seek advice, said the Lord. You shall be one who shall be strong with a team, said the Lord. 
and which shall walk amongst the team as an equal, saith God. So now, my son, the footsteps that you walk in are now holy and are not your own, saith God. But I have called thee to walk in my footsteps, saith the Lord, in my direction, after me, and more, and more, and more, in my likeness, saith God. So therefore I will fortify thee, and I shall build in thee all those things, saith the Lord, that I desire, so that you shall be successful at the very things that I will call you to do, and where to walk, when to speak, saith God. Have I not spoken to you and said in times past that, yea, the body is hungry, and yea, they understand the gospel as you present it, saith the Lord? There's not one in this body, saith God, that presents the gospel as you present it, saith the Lord. For even the young can understand and receive Christ. And even that gifting, saith the Lord, I'm going to fortify and multiply. And at your hands, you'll be amazed one day, saith God, when you find out the souls that have been led to the Lord because of your faithfulness to speak the gospel. Save the Lord. Come here, Sam. I'm looking at you as we're praying, and I'm thinking, okay, this is one flash of Gary. Yeah. And she will be that, also that strong thing that my wife has done for me. And so we include you in this whole ordination process as the help meet that is probably the stronger foundation even than you realize that makes it possible for Gary to do what he will do. Yes. And so we commission you to that. Yes. As his strong, fortified, strong right arm. In Jesus' name. Amen.